Gantrosaurus. Gantrosaurus, slash introsaurus slash Gantrosaurus, is a genus of stegosaurian dinosaur from the late Jurassic of Tanzania. The type species is K. Ethiopicus, named and described by German paleontologist Edwin Hennig in 1915. Often thought to be a primitive member of the Stegosauria, several recent cladistic analyzes find it as more derived than many other Stegosaurs, and a close relative of Stegosaurus from the North American Morrison formation within the Stegosauridae. Fossils of K. Ethiopicus have been found only in the Tendaguru formation, dated to the late Kimmeridgean and early Tithonian ages, about 152 million years ago. Hundreds of bones were unearthed by German expeditions to German East Africa between 1909 and 1912. Although no complete skeletons are known, the remains provided a nearly complete picture of the build of the animal. Gantrosaurus generally measured around 4.5 meters, 15 feet, in length as an adult, and weighed about 1 ton, 1.1 tons. It walked on all fours with straight hind limbs. Dotted had a small, elongated head with a beak used to bite off plant material that would be digested in a large gut. It had a, probably double, row of small plates running down its neck and back. These plates gradually merged into spikes on the hip and tail. The longest spikes were on the tail end and were used to actively defend the animal. There also was a long spike on each shoulder. The thigh bones come in two different types, suggesting that one sex was larger and more stout than the other. Discovery and Species The first fossils of Gantrosaurus were discovered by the German Tendiguru expedition in 1909, recognized as belonging to a stegosaur by expedition leader Werner Jainsch on July 24, 1910 and described by German paleontologist Edwin Hennig in 1915. The name Kentrosaurus was coined by Hennig and comes from the Greek kentron slash kappa nu tau rho omicron nu, meaning sharp point or prickle, and soros slash sigma alpha rho omicron sigma meaning lizard. Hennig added the specific name Ethiopicus to denote the provenance from Africa. From 1909 onwards, Gantrosaurus remains were uncovered in four quarries in the Middle Ersoriaschichten, Middle Saurian beds, and one quarry in the Oberersoriaschichten, Upper Saurian beds. During four field seasons, the German expedition found over 1,200 bones of Gantrosaurus, belonging to about 50 individuals, many of which were destroyed during the Second World War. Today, almost all remaining material is housed in the Museum for Naturkunde de Berlin roughly 350 remaining specimens, while the Museum of the Institute for Geosciences of the University of Tübingen houses a composite mount, roughly 50% of it being original bones. Although no complete individuals were found, some material was discovered in association, including a nearly complete tail, hip, several dorsal vertebrae and some limb elements of one individual. These form the core of a mount in the Museum for Naturkunde by Jange. The mount was dismantled during the museum renovation in 2006-2007, and remounted in an improved pose by Research Casting International. Some other material, including a brain case and spine, was thought to have been misplaced or destroyed during World War II. However, all the supposedly lost cranial material was later found in a drawer of a basement cupboard. The type and sole accepted species of Gantrosaurus is Gantrosaurus ethiopicus, named by Hennig in 1915. Fragmentary fossil material from Wyoming, named Stegosaurus longus pinus by Charles Gilmore in 1914, was in 1993 classified as a North American species of Gantrosaurus, as K. longus pinus. However, this action was not accepted by the paleontological community, and S. longus pinus has been assigned to its own genus, Alcovasaurus, differing from Gantrosaurus in having more elongated tail spikes in the structure of the pelvis and vertebrae. Type specimens and type locality. In the original description, Henning did not designate a holotype specimen. However, in a detailed monography on the osteology, systematic position and paleobiology of Gantrosaurus in 1925, Henning picked the most complete partial skeleton, today inventorized as mb.r.4800.1 through mb.r.4800.37, as electotype, C syntype. This material includes a nearly complete series of tail vertebrae, several vertebrae of the back, a sacrum with five sacral vertebrae and both ilia, both femora and an ulna, and is included in the mounted skeleton at the Museum for Naturkunde in Berlin, Germany. The type locality is Kindope, Tanzania, near the Tendiguru Hill. Unaware that Hennig had already defined a lectotype, Peter Galton selected two dorsal vertebrae, specimens mb.r.1930 and mb.r.1931, from the material figured in Hennig's 1915 description, as holotypes. This definition of a holotype is not valid, because Hennig's selection has priority. In 2011, 
Heinrich Malleson clarified that all the material known to Hennig in 1915, i.e. all the bones discovered before 1912, when Hermann Heck concluded the last German excavations, are paralectotypes, and that MB.R.4800 is the correct lectotype. Naming Controversy Soon after its description, a controversy arose over the stegosaurus name, which is very similar to the ceratopsi and centrosaurus. Under the rules of biological nomenclature, forbidding homonymy, two animals may not be given the same name. Hennigray named his stegosaur Kentrorosaurus, pointed Dale Saurian, in 1916, while Hungarian paleontologist Franz Nopca renamed the genus Doriforosaurus, lance bearing Saurian, the same year. If a renaming had been necessary, Hennigs would have had priority. However, because the spelling is different, both Doriforosaurus and Kentrorosaurus are unneeded replacement names, Kentrosaurus remains the valid name for the genus with Kentrorosaurus and Doriforosaurus being its junior objective synonyms. Description Kentrosaurus was a small stegosaur. It had the typical dinosaurian body plan, characterized by a small head, a long neck, short forelimbs and long hindlimbs, and a long, horizontal and muscular tail. Typical stegosaur traits included the elongation and flatness of the head, the powerful build of the forelimbs, erect and pillar-like hindlimbs and an array of plates and spikes running along both sides of the top midline of the animal. Died only a single complete tooth was known when Hennig published his monography in 1925. Later, a part of a dentary, the tooth-bearing bone of the front lower jaw, was found, which bears a just emerging tooth, and some tooth fragments were recovered from matrix sticking to other bones. The deep dentary is almost identical in shape to that of Stegosaurus, albeit much smaller. Similarly, the tooth is a typical Stegosaurian tooth, small with a widened base and vertical grooves creating five ridges. Size and Posture Gantrosaurus ethiopicus was smaller than Stegosaurus ungulatus, Hesperosaurus mjosi, Dacentrurus armatus and Tuogiangosaurus multispinus, and about as large as Huayangosaurus taibai. The total length of a composite skeletal mount in the Museum for Naturkunde Berlin, Germany, from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail is 4.5 meters, 15 feet. Slightly more than half of this length is made up by the tail. Larger single elements were found, so that the animal could probably attain a total length of 5.5 meters, 18 feet. In 2010, Gregory S. Paul estimated the weight of a 4 meter long, 13 feet. Gantrosaurus at 700 kilograms, 1,500 pounds. An estimate for the 4.5 meters long composite mount in the Museum for Naturkunde Berlin by Malison, on the basis of a virtual 3D skeleton and 3D model, varied between 1073 liters and 1,267 liters, and a body mass between 1 and 1.5 tons, 1.1 and 1.7 short tons, depending on the amount of musculature reconstructed for the tail. The long tail of Kentrosaurus results in a position of the center of mass that is unusually far back for a quadrupedal animal. It rests just in front of the hip, a position usually seen in bipedal dinosaurs. However, the femora are straight in Kentrosaurus, as opposed to typical bipeds, indicating a straight and vertical limb position. Thus, the hindlimbs, though powered by massive thigh muscles attached to a long ilium, did not support the animal alone, and the very robust forelimbs took up 10 to 15 percent of the body weight. Distinguishing Features Gantrosaurus can be distinguished from other members of the Stegosauria by a number of extensions of the vertebrae, which in the tail do not run sub-parallel, as in most dinosaurs. Dot in the front third of the tail, they point backwards, the usual direction. In the middle tail, however, they are almost vertical, and further back they are hook-shaped and point obliquely forward. Also typical is that the dorsal, back, vertebrae have a neural arch more than twice as high as the centrum, the vertebral body, and almost completely occupied by the extremely spacious neural canal. The preacetabular process, front blade, of the ilium widens laterally, to the front outer side, and does not taper. Furthermore, there is a unique combination of traits not in themselves unique. The transverse processes, the side extensions, of the tail are present up to the 28th vertebra of the series. The transverse processes of the front tail vertebrae are rod-shaped with narrow bases and do not touch the plate formed by the fusion of the processes of the sacral vertebrae. The chevrons, bones pointing to below from the bottom side of the tail vertebrae, have the shape of an inverted T. The length of the ilium equals, or is greater than, that of the thigh bone. Dot. Armor Typically for a stegosaur, Gantrosaurus had extensive osteoderm, bony structures in the skin, covering, including small plates probably located on the neck and anterior trunk, and spikes of various shapes. 
The spikes of Kentrosaurus are very elongated, with one specimen having a bone core length of 731 mm. The plates have a thickened section in the middle, as if they were modified spines. The spikes and plates were likely covered by horn. Aside from a few exceptions they were not found in close association with other skeletal remains. Thus, the exact position of most osteoderms is uncertain. A pair of closely spaced spikes was found articulated with a tail tip, and a number of spikes were found apparently regularly spaced in pairs along the path of an articulated tail. Hennig and Jange, while grouping the dermal armor elements into four distinct types, recognized an apparently continuous change of shape among them, shorter and flatter plates at the front gradually merging into longer and more pointed spikes towards the rear, suggesting an uninterrupted distribution along the entire body, in 15 pairs. Because each type of osteoderm was found in mirrored left and right versions, it seems probable that all types of osteoderms were distributed in two rows along the back of the animal, a marked contrast to the better known North American Stegosaurus, which had one row of plates on the neck, trunk and tail, and two rows of spikes on the tail tip. There is one type of spike that differs from all others in being strongly, and not only slightly, asymmetrical, and having a very broad base. Because of bone morphology classic reconstructions placed it on the hips, at the iliac blade, while many recent reconstructions place it on the shoulder, because a similarly shaped spike is known to have existed on the shoulder in the Chinese Stegosaurus gigant Spinosaurus and Huayangasaurus. Phylogeny Gantrosaurus was by Hennig assigned to the Stegosauridae in 1915. This is confirmed by modern cladistic analyzes, although in 1915 Stegosauridae was a far more inclusive concept. A consecutive narrowing down of this concept caused Gantrosaurus, until the 1980s to be seen as a typical primitive Stegosaurian, to be placed in a more derived, higher, position in the Stegosaur evolutionary tree. Derived traits include a sacrally oak, a long propubic process, a long thigh bone and two rows of plates or spikes. A study by Octavio Matteo C.A. in 2009 recovered Gantrosaurus in a basal position in the Stegosauridae as shown by this cladogram. Earlier analyses had shown Gantrosaurus closer in the tree to Stegosaurus. Basal traits include a prominent paraquadratic foramen at the quadrant in the skull, maxillary teeth with only seven denticles at the margin, and a shoulder spine. Paleobiology Feeding Like all ornithicians, Gantrosaurus was a herbivore. The fodder was barely chewed and swallowed in large chunks. One theory on Stegosaurid diet holds that they were low-level browsers, eating foliage and low-growing fruit from various non-flowering plants. Gantrosaurus was capable of eating at heights of up to 1.7 meters, 5 feet 7 in, when on all fours. It may also have been possible for it to rear up on its hind legs to reach vegetation higher in trees. With its center of mass close to the hind limbs, the animal could potentially support itself as it stood up. The hips were likely capable of allowing a vertical trunk rotation of about 60 degrees and the tail probably would either have been fully lifted, not blocking this movement or have enough curvature to rest on the ground, thus it could have provided additional support, though precisely because of this flexibility it is not certain whether much support was actually provided, it was not stiff enough to function as a third leg as had been suggested by Robert Thomas Backer. In this pose, Gantrosaurus could have fed at heights of 3.3 meters, 11 feet. Defense Because the tail had at least 40 caudal vertebrae, it was highly mobile. It could possibly swing at an arc of 180 degrees, covering the entire half circle behind it. Swing speeds at the tail end may have been as high as 50 km per hour. Continuous rapid swings would have allowed the spikes to slash open the skin of its attacker or to stab the soft tissues and break the ribs or facial bones. More directed blows would have resulted in the sides of the spikes fracturing even sturdy long bones of the legs by blunt trauma. These attacks would have crippled small and medium-sized theropods and may even have done some damage to large ones. Earlier interpretations of the defensive behavior of Kentrosaurus included the suggestion that the animal might have charged to the rear, to run through attackers with its spines, in the way of modern porcupines. Though Gantrosaurus likely stood with four limbs erect like in other dinosaurs, it is hypothesized that the animal adopted a sprawling posture when defending itself. Its neck was flexible enough to allow it to keep sight of predators, as it could reach the sides of its body with its snout and look over the back. In addition, the posterior position of the center of mass may not have been advantageous for rapid locomotion, but meant that the animal could quickly rotate around the hips by pushing sideways with the arms, keeping the tail pointed at the attacker. Gantrosaurus was nevertheless not invulnerable. A quick predator could have made it to the tail base, where the impact speed would be much lower, when the tail passed and the neck and upper part of the body would have been unprotected by the tail swings. A successful predation of Gantrosaurus may have required group hunting. 
compared to the more robust spikes of Stegosaurus, the thinner spikes of Kentrosaurus were at greater risk of bending. Growth In 2013, a study by Ragnar Riedelstor FIA concluded that the bone histology of Gentrosaurus indicated that it had a higher growth rate than reported for Stegosaurus and Scutellosaurus, in view of the relatively rapid deposition of highly vascularized fibrolamellar bone. As Stegosaurus was larger than Gentrosaurus, this contradicts the general rule that larger dinosaurs grew quicker than smaller ones. Sexual dimorphism Differences in the proportions, not the size, of the femurs, thigh bones led Holly Barden and Susanna Maidman to realize that Gentrosaurus probably showed sexual dimorphism. This dimorphism of the femurs consisted in them being either more or less robust than the other. The occurrence ratio of the robust morph to the gracile one was 2 to 1, and it is likely that the higher percentage of animals were females. Because of this ratio, it was considered reasonable to assume that in their society, Gentrosaurus males mated with more than one female, a behavior also found in other vertebrates. The problem posed by the ratio is that the multiple specimens studied, died in the same place, but probably not in a sudden mass death and so do not represent a single herd or contemporary population. The results may have been distorted by a greater chance for robust animals of getting fossilized or discovered. In an earlier study by Galton in 1982, it was suggested that individual difference in the sacral rib count of both Kentrosaurus and Dasentrorus might be an indication of dimorphism. Females would have had an extra pair of sacral ribs, having also the first sacral vertebra connected to the ilium, in addition to the subsequent four sacrals. Reproduction As the plates and spikes would have been obstacles during copulation, it is possible that pairs mated back to back with the female staying still in a lordosis posture as the male maneuvers this penis into her cloaca. The shoulder spikes would have made the female unable to lay on her side during mating as is proposed for Stegosaurus. Paleoecology Gentrosaurus lived in what is now Tanzania in the late Jurassic Dendiguru formation. The main Gentrosaurus quarries were located in the middle Saurian beds dating from the upper Kemergian. Some remains were found in the upper Saurian beds dating from the Tithonian. Since 2012, the boundary between the Kemergian and Tithonian is dated at 152.1 million years ago. The Tendiguru ecosystem primarily consisted of three types of environment, shallow, lagoon-like marine environments, tidal flats and low coastal environments, and vegetated inland environments. The marine environment existed above the fair weather wave base and behind siliciclastic and ooid barriers. It appeared to have had little change in salinity levels and experienced tides and storms. The coastal environments consisted of brackish coastal lakes, ponds and pools. These environments had little vegetation and were probably visited by herbivorous dinosaurs mostly during droughts. The well-vegetated inlands were dominated by conifers. Overall, the late Jurassic Dendiguru climate was subtropical to tropical with seasonal rains and pronounced dry periods. During the early Cretaceous, the Tendiguru became more humid. The Tendiguru beds are similar to the Morrison Formation of North America except in its marine interbeds. Gantrosaurus would have coexisted with fellow ornithischians like Dicilotosaurus letau verbecki, the sauropods Giraffotitan branchi, Dicreosaurus hansmanni and D. saddlery, Jananskia africana, Tendiguria tanzaniensis and Tornaria africanus, Theropods Allosaurus tendigrensis, Ceratosaurus rochlingi, Ceratosaurus ingens, Elaphrosaurus bambergi, Veteupristisaurus milneri and Ostafricosaurus crassoceratus, and the Pterosaur tendigripterus retski. Other organisms that inhabited the tendigru included corals, echinoderms, cephalopods, bivalves, gastropods, decapods, sharks, neopterygian fish, crocodilians and small mammals like Brancatherulum tendigrensis, 